Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our 90-second in hour. Uh, if you need assistance, please feel free to send us a message through the chat window. And if you're having difficulties in configuring your connection, please look out from the session or join again. You may also use your smartphones or tablets to join by using the webinar 383-972-419. Please be reminded that all microphones are throughout your meeting. For comments, please use, use the chat box. And for questions, please use the questions box. The Q&A will be done after the lecture. Before we start our webinar, we would like to introduce our four speakers for tonight. Uh, Luke Duncan, who leads the development of software at IntraHealth, including OpenHIE reference technologies, including the Interlinked Registry and the IRIS suite of software. Uh, Ali Shaban, who develops and provides training on IntraHealth-led software products, particularly the IRIS, MHERO, and Health Worker Registry platforms. Richard Stanley, who provides technical support and direction to all IntraHealth digital health projects, including OpenHIE, One Million Community Health Workers, Uganda, and others. And Ms. Emily Nicholson, who manages several inter-health projects, including OpenHIE, MHERO, and others. Um, we will now pass the presenter controls to Ms. Emily. Hello, Ms. Emily. Are you able to receive the prompt? Yes, I see it. Okay. Thank you, Cha. Uh, are you sharing your screen now? I'm not. Would you like me to go ahead and start? Ah, uh, yes. I can see your screen now. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hello, Ms. Emily. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, you can start the discussion now. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. My name is Emily Nicholson, and I'm a Senior Informatics Officer at IntraHealth International. Along with my colleagues, we will be presenting on the Health Worker Registry and Open Info Man. We are coming to you from a variety of different locations and time zones, so please bear with us as we co-facilitate this presentation. So the team um, that will be presenting this morning or evening, depending on your location, is Luke Duncan, our Assistant Director of Digital Health. Luke leads software development at IntraHealth, including our OpenHIE reference technologies, which you'll learn about today, and the IRIS suite of software. We'll also be joined by Ali Shaban. Ali is a health workforce technologist um, joining us from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Ali develops and provides training on our software products, particularly Iris M Hero and the Health Worker Registry platforms. Ali is going to give us a demonstration of these um, platforms later on today. 
Then we'll also be joined by Richard Stanley. He's the newest member of our team. Richard's joining us from um, Kenya this morning. He is a technical advisor and provides support to all of our digital health programs, including OpenHIE, One Million Community Health Workers, a project in Tanzania, I'm sorry, in Uganda, and the D-Lab program in Tanzania. And then there's myself, Emily. Um, I support our OpenHIE project, as well as Amhero Liberia, Tanzania Bid and a variety of other programs. So today we're going to start with an overview of a health worker registry from the programmatic side, what it looks like, and um, share with you some tools for implementing a health worker registry. Then we'll have an overview of Open InfoMan, a demonstration of Open InfoMan and a health worker registry, and then another demonstration on Docker, some tools for starting up a health worker registry quickly. Um, of course, we've saved time at the end for questions and answers. So we'd like to frame this presentation in light of the open HIE architecture. Many of you on the call or many of the participants on the webinar are likely familiar with open HIE, um, but I'm going to give you a brief overview. Open HIE is really a community of communities. It's made up of countries, organizations, individuals, and donors driven to help underserved environments better leverage their electronic health information through standardization. So what that means is the OpenHIE community does a variety of things and works in a variety of areas. Um, we provide architecture and design to support information sharing at scale. The architecture itself provides a pattern for connecting what could be data silos holding health information. The OpenHIE community and this architecture provide a method for humans and um, health information systems to communicate with each other, enabling large-scale health information interoperability. OpenHIE as a community also develops and offers freely available standard-based approaches and reference technologies. And then we also provide support to other members of our community through peer technical assistance communities. There are communities um, for each of the OpenHIE component layers listed at the top of the diagram. And so I'm going to walk us through those um, just very quickly. The way the OpenHIE architecture is set up, there are component layers at the top. So on the left is the terminology services. Then there's a client registry. There's a shared health record. There's a health management information system facility registry component, and then finally the health worker registry. The health worker registry is the component, of course, that we'll be talking about today. Um, the interoperability layer, that middle green bar, is the component that enables easier interoperability between the disparate or what would be disparate information systems by connecting the component layers or infrastructure services with the client applications down at the bottom. So you see the external systems or um, point of service applications would be a mobile phone or a clinic, um, a lab or a hospital or some other health management information system. The interoperability layer receives transactions from those point of service systems and coordinates interactions between components of the HIE, providing common core functions to simplify interoperability as well as maintaining security and audit trails. So what is a health worker registry? Simply put, a health worker registry is a national authority of health worker information according to a defined minimum data set. The health worker registry serves as a publicly available electronic phone book of health workers across all sectors, public, private, faith-based, any type of organization that has information on a health worker. So I thought it might be useful to spend a little bit of time talking about some use cases that describe why a health worker registry would be useful to the entities that deal with health worker information. So um, the first example of how a health worker registry could be used is for the verification of registration. So 
for example, the HR department and the Ministry of Health must validate health workers' registration status with relevant professional councils. So typically an employer, whether working for a private, public, or faith-based facility, would contact those professional councils directly to inquire about the registration status of a particular health worker. As you can imagine, this can be complex and slow, lots of phone calls and emails and follow-up, and then sometimes it can also be fraudulent. So a health worker registry would simplify this process by providing a single point to ascertain the certification status of a health worker, rather than requiring someone to contact each of the various professional councils for each of the various health workers for whom they need information. Another Hello. way that, yes. Oh. Emily, uh, did you try uh, putting your, your screen in full show? I'm sorry? Uh, did you try putting your slides in full show? Yes, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so that was the... Um, use case of a verification of registration. Another one might be um, national health worker deployment. So a health worker registry facilitates the collection of health worker information from across multiple systems, as I've just said. Um, so this information can also be used, for example, by a professional council to determine where their members are working. It can also be used to report aggregate health worker information to systems such as a health worker a health workforce observatory. And finally, another use case for a health worker registry would be um, for training institutions. So medical schools and other in-service training organizations are important consumers of data, and they're also potential sources of data systems that would feed into a health worker registry. Pre-service institutions such as medical schools or colleges of nursing can inform professional councils who to contact for registration and um, to whom they have issued proper licenses to practice. The health worker registry is also a useful link between a health worker's employer and in-service training institutions because an employer can receive the outcome of a health worker's training directly from the institution rather than collecting that certification from the individual. So this is um, somewhat related to the verification of registration use case I discussed earlier, but instead it's around training and the types of training that health workers have received. Um, a training institution could also share data with other training institutions to confirm if a particular health worker has completed a specific course of training. So the idea here would be to prevent um, health workers from participating in multiple trainings and to standardize some of the trainings that health workers receive. So as we've just discussed, uh, governments collect and store multiple and disparate sources of data on health workers. Compiling this information and maintaining an up-to-date master list of all health workers in the country would be a colossal task. So a health worker registry seeks to reduce this complexity by creating and utilizing a minimum data set of health workforce information from the various source data systems that I discussed. Um, it also merges this information from those systems into an authoritative registry of health workers according to a data governance policy. And, of course, the health worker registry allows queries of health worker information by various systems and users, whether those are health information systems or um, human users. So this slide illustrates what a health worker registry looks like. As you can see in the image, a national health worker registry aggregates a minimum data set from a number of different health workforce information sources, providing a unified source of health workforce information to different health information systems. So you can see how the arrows go uh, there, um, go into and out of the health worker registry. Those professional councils and in-service and pre-service training institutions and even the mHealth systems and eHealth systems are pulling data from the health worker registry and then pushing data into it. 
A health worker registry functions by providing query and resolution services so that those participating systems can validate or obtain the formal or and normalized minimum data set such as names of health workers or other references to the health worker. At the bottom I have included um, the open HIE architecture and as when we started the presentation, we started with an overview of the Open HIE architecture itself, and I had circled the health worker registry in the top right-hand corner. So this slide really is sort of an explosion out of that top right-hand corner, depicting all of the various sources of information that would feed into a health worker registry. So IntraHealth International and the OpenHIE community have created a variety of implementation tools to support the development of a health worker registry. There is an OpenHIE health worker registry implementation guide, which you can find on the OpenHIE um, website. And there are communities. There's a health worker registry um, community group, which is combined right now with the interlinked registry community group. We meet once a month on Wednesdays and um, share stories and discuss with implementers how they are managing health worker registries and interlinked registries. There's also a wiki page and a variety of other tools um, included in our implementation guide. And I just did a screenshot here of some of the tools that we have created. Um, there are information on what a health worker registry minimum data set should look like. The WHO has defined one and there are others that are out there. And we've also created some crosswalks. So these are, t excuse me, these are tools to link um, data from a source system to a health worker registry through um, certain standards for data exchange. At this point, I am going to pass my um, presenter mode to my colleague, Luke Duncan. Luke, are you with us? Hi, I'm here. Awesome. OK. Oh, I, I thought you were going to keep presenting. Maybe, maybe you want me to present. Um, yes, unless you want to pass it to Ali. No, it's fine. Let me, let me just pull it up. While Luke is pulling that up, um, I can take any questions if anyone has any. Uh, is that working? It said Actually, it was going. Look. It's not. Yeah. Here. I will keep it up and you go ahead. Okay. So do you. Okay. So, Chuck, can you see my screen again? Yeah. It looks like it's showing up. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, so Emily's gone over kind of what the health worker registry is, and then I'll talk a little bit about the, so the uh, software we created uh, to do it, and then Ali will get into a little bit of, of actually seeing it. Um, so Open InfoMan is our software. It's a reference implementation of CSD, which is a standard that was published by IHE, which is an international organization called Integrating the Health Enterprise, um, and they, they put out lots of profiles for, uh, well, for lots of things, but the one that we particularly worked with was for interoperability, and, and that's what CSD is. CSD stands for Care Services Discovery, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so Open InfoMan has lots of different libraries for doing lots of different things. Uh, there's, there's a specific library for setting up health worker registries. And it just has stored functions which allow you to make changes as needed because even though there's going to be lots of sources of data, sometimes you may need to, 
to make tweaks uh, of the data set you have in your health worker registry. So this library allows you to make um, the, the CRUD operations, which stands for create, read, update, and delete. Um, so it has a web interface so that people can, can manage your health worker registry. Uh, and then the interoperability layer that we saw on that OpenHIE architecture map is what kind of handles the security uh, for people accessing that. Okay, you can go to the next one. Can you advance the slide? Or maybe I'm not seeing it. Okay, I, there we go. I did. <laughs> Can you see it? Okay, it's there. It's okay. there now. Sorry. Maybe it's just a little delay on my side. Okay. Um, okay. So, Care Services Discovery, uh, again, is that, that standard uh, written by IAT. Uh, it uses XML to describe. I mean, there's, there's lots of things in it. I'll, I'll just kind of do a brief overview. Uh, it uses XML to describe the data for four different uh, resources. Uh, health workers, organizations, facilities, and then any uh, services that they provide, um, and, and also how they all link together. So you'll have the health workers, which organizations they may be a part of, which facilities they work at. In addition, the facilities will also be linked to an organization in, in most cases. And then the services would be kind of linked to, to all three of those, uh, depending on what data you may have. So, you know, one, one worker may be providing a particular service. At one facility, they may have the same or a different set of services at a different facility. Um, so CSD kind of can handle uh, that data. And it can also be extended if there's additional data that, that needs to be tracked. Uh, you can go ahead to the next. So there are four actors in CSD. This is kind of handles uh, all the interactions, and there are three transactions. Um, so in your top left, you've got the service finder, uh, and what it does is it's just a client out there that wants to look up information. Uh, so it will query the care services info manager to find, you know, uh, a provider at this facility, a uh, provider at, you know, with this name or the specialty. Um, it can also, there's an, there's an optional uh, transaction in the profile that lets you look up to see when services are actually available. So you can see you know, what a, you know, when, when they can see you for certain uh, services. Uh, the Care Services Info Manager may all, will, will get updates from the Care Services Directory. So that's uh, if you remember the, the little map from before. So that's how it would get updates from uh, a facility registry or, or IRIS uh, to get all of the you know, changes that have happened since the last time it looked. Okay, I can go to the next. So we've just finished a new profile through IHE. It's currently in um, trial implementation, uh, and it's called Mobile Care Services Discovery. Uh, it, it's based on CSD and FHIR, so it, uh, it can be used very similarly to CSD, but it's based on FHIR, which is I'm forgetting what the acronym stands for. <laughs> um, FAST. But it, but fast Health Interoperability Resources. Yeah, sorry, thanks. Exactly. <laughs> no problem. Um, so there are five different resources that we use as part of MCSD. Um, and Open InfoMan doesn't currently support MCSD yet, but that's what we'll be working on in the next few months. Um, to hopefully be tested in either January or at the EU Connectathon. Uh, so the, the resources used are, again, the practitioner, practitioner role, 
organization, location, and healthcare service. And a little bit later, we'll see how all those map together. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. So MCSD has a little bit more of a separated set of actors. There's uh, you know four actors and two transactions. Um, so there's a selective consumer that kind of does the searches, and that would be where you would look for, again, a facility in a particular place or a health worker with a particular name or that works in a particular facility or, again, has a particular uh, specialty. And then the update consumer and supplier is where you um, get the mass level of updates. So if you've got either a federated system or just lots of sources of data, um, so you could have a central server that could go out and get the updates from, you know, again, IRS, or you can get an update from a facility registry. Um, and, you know, so for example, the facility registry is only going to have location data. Uh, it's not going to have the uh, health workers, but then IRS would have the health workers. Um, and so, you know, the different suppliers, uh, you know, may only support a certain set of those resources. Okay, you can move to the next. So this is just kind of shows a little bit of comparison about how CSD and MCSD um, are related. Um, and you can kind of see what actors are the same. So the, the service finder in CSD is the same as that selective consumer um, where it can, you know, again, find those updates. We don't currently, the MCSD doesn't currently have the um, service availability lookup. Um, we found that wasn't, we weren't quite ready to use all that yet. That's something that could potentially be added. Uh, the data is available in the fire resources. Um, and so if there is a need for that, that may be something that can be updated. Um, and then again, so the care services directory in CSD is the same as the care services update supplier in MCSD. And the Care Services Info Manager is really two different actors in MCSD, uh, which is that selective supplier to re respond to specific queries in the update consumer to go out and get the, the batch updates from all the various directories. Um, and then again, you can see the resources that are used and how they are mapped to fire um, and MCSD. So the health worker in CSD is the same as the practitioner along with the practitioner role, which is where you get the links to the organization, facility, and service. Um, and then the rest you can see. The organization is this, you know, basically the same, and the facility is the same as the location, and then the, uh, the service. OK, you can go to the next. So Open InfoMan, again, is the reference implementation of CSD. Um, you get all of your care services data into a central place so that you can query one place instead of having to worry about where all those uh, various data come from, although it, you, you would generally get uh, also a reference to know where it came from. And then it is the, the software behind the health worker registry as well as the interlinked registry. Um, since it's CSD based, you know, the health worker registry again would focus on the health worker data, but the interlinked registry has all of that data uh, from facilities and the health workers, organizations, and services in, in one place. Uh, you can go to the next. Uh, Open InfoMan is based on BaseX, uh, which is an XML database engine. Uh, so all of the data is, is saved in XML and binary files. Uh, and it also implements an XQuery processor, which is how you can kind of write uh, custom functions uh, as well as this rex, rest XQ so that you can make it easy for people to query certain types of uh, so you, if you have if you have a repetitive function you can set that up in your server in basex so that people can access it quickly to do uh, simple queries uh, it also allows people to do you know ad hoc queries where they can write their own very complicated uh, set to, to look up whatever they need to look up um, you can go to the next one. 
And now I'm going to pass it along to Allie to talk about installing and uh, running open info man. Hello, this is Ali Shaban, and I'm working as a health workforce technologist with IntraHealth. I'm going to take you through the installation procedures of Open InfoMan and then I'll switch on into the demonstration of Open InfoMan and the Health Worker Registry. So there are three ways for which Open InfoMan can be installed. The first one is the easiest one I can start with is through Debian packages. So Open InfoMan has been packaged in Debian. You can just add our repository by running this command sudo add up the repository the open HIE repository and then you update the package manager and then you can install it the second procedure the, this procedure can just be installed in Ubuntu and it has been tested for Ubuntu 14.04 and 14.10 uh, I'm not sure if it can run in 14.02 I mean the I mean Ubuntu releases before 14.04. I'm not sure you can just test it, but for 14.04 and 14.10 it has no issues. Uh, the second procedure, you can just make an installation using manual procedures. The manual procedures are, can be uh, can be can be seen from the GitHub of Open Informan. And the other one, which I think Richard is going to talk about it soon, is using Docker. Docker allows Open Informant to run in other operating systems like Mac and Windows. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so there are uh, some libraries which have been developed to extend the functionality of Open Informant. So if you install Open Informant, it doesn't come with uh, all of the libraries. It doesn't support everything. So there are some libraries which have been developed to support or to add more functionalities on Open Informant. So those libraries are also packaged, packaged in Debian. You can just install them. Once you add the Debian repository for OpenHIE, then you can just install these libraries. For example, if you want to have DHS2 functionalities within Open, Open Informant, you can just run this command and then you can have DHS2 functionalities added in, in Open Informant. Next slide, please. Yeah, so it can happen that you may develop your own stored function. If you have an extra requirement, that cannot be done by all the libraries which are available within Open Informant. You can just develop your own stored function. And these are the procedures to install the stored function. There are some tools within Open Informant that can help you to install a new stored function that doesn't come uh, with, with Open Informant. Next slide. Yes, I think Luke has explained, Emily has explained about this, uh, where Open Informant feeds in Open HIE. As you can see, it's, it feeds on the interoperability layer. As Emily has explained, it's just I can say it's a service of interoperability layer. It just integrates health worker registry. You may, you may have, it may happen that you have multiple health worker registries, multiple facility registries. So what Open InfoMan is doing is just to integrate all those health worker registries and facility registries into one interface so that information can be queried from one interface. So it's just a part of the service of the interoperability layer. It doesn't stand on its own. Next slide. 
Yeah, so we have a number of countries that have used Open Informat, and uh, I have picked some three countries. We have Liberia, we have Sierra Leone, and we have Tanzania. For Liberia and Sierra Leone, we have deployed Open Informat in MHERO. MHERO stands for Mobile Health Electronic Response and Outreach. It is actually an, a two-way mobile phone-based communication system that uses basic text messaging to connect ministries and health workers. So if Minister of Health needs some information to health workers, they just create workflows in RapidPro and then they start that workflow to a particular health worker. So Open Informan is playing a role of fetching all health workers from human resource systems. For Liberia, we are, we are just using IRIS as a human resource system. So Open Informan is fetching human resource information from IRIS and facility information from IRIS. And it also fetches facility data from DHS2 and then it combines them. And then it provides a way for this information to be queried uh, for these text messages to be sent. The other system that is using Open Informan in the same country, Liberia, is EDSR. EDSR stands for Electronic Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response. It's just uh, Minister of Health is using this system to report on uh, disease surveillance. If someone comes to a, to a health facility showing some symptoms of a certain disease, a health worker can just take a mobile phone and send an alert to other people at the at the ministry or uh, the center for disease control and other interested people who need to know uh, information about that disease. So Open Informan also plays a role whereby it fetches health worker data from IRIS and DHS2 so that uh, information, health worker information can be queried easily. The other country where the Open Informant have been used is Tanzania. And I can explain how it has been used in the next slide. Can you go on the next slide, Emil? Yeah, so in my country, Tanzania, uh, we have a system called TIMA. TIMA stands for Tanzania Immunization Registry. Uh, this is a system that tracks disaggregated immunization details. So we wanted to integrate or to make interoperability between the system, TIMA, and another system called VIMS, and VIMS stands for Vaccine Information Management, Management System, and also DHS2. I think most of you are aware of DHS2, District Health Information System. So for this interoperability, so what we are doing, we have implemented this interoperability using OpenHIE, for which we have developed some mediators which are running within OpenHIM. And those mediators, what they are doing is just to, in monthly basis, they request vaccination information from TIMA for a particular facility, and then they send those details in the in aggregated format to VIMS and DHS2. So for open heme mediators to be able to fetch uh, vaccine information from TIMA, they first need to know uh, a facility ID that is known by TIMA. And then what it ha once it has that information, it can get vaccinated information for that facility, and then it will need to report it to VIMS. But it also needs to know for that TIMA facility ID, what is the corresponding VIMS facility ID, as well as DHS2 facility ID, then Open Informan is playing that role. So what we did is just to pull together all facilities from TIMA, VIMS, and DHS2, as well as we have the health facility registry, and then doing some mappings between those facilities, so that for every facility we, we have its correct corresponding identifier for, for other systems. Like for Facility X, we have TIMA ID, we have VIMS ID, and we have DHS2 ID. 
and using stored functions which are within open informant, then open him can just easily query those informations within open informant. Next slide, please. So I'll take you into demonstration. I prefer to start with open informant and then uh, so what I can say, there is open informant and there is administration, uh, I think you can see my screen. So there is open informant and th there is an administration interface of open informant. Both of these make up the so-called open HIE health worker registry. So. Uh, in my demonstration, there is a lot that can be done within Open Informant, but I have picked something that I can demonstrate today. I'll show you how you can load or how you can link Open Informant with uh, health worker systems or HRIS health human resource information systems. There are three ways that you can do. The first one, the first way is you just go to server management. So as Luke has explained, Open Informant is using BaseX database, and BaseX is an XML database, meaning that it stores information in 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 a binary in binary files in an XML format. So what you need to do is just to create a blank directory. That's the first way you can you can have human resource information or facility information loaded into Open Informant. So for example, I can create an empty directory, let's say test, test deal, or uh, yeah, test one. And then once I create this one, then it's going to be shown in here. If you open it, it's going to be, it will show up something which is blank. Unfortunately, nothing is displayed, yeah. So this is how it is. It is blank. It doesn't have anything. You just have organization directory, service directory, facility directory, provider directory. It is blank. So what you can do now, you have, you have a document or an XML file within Basics ready to store human resource information. So with this way, you can just use uh, stored functions that comes with Open Informant to fetch some human resource information from other systems and load them into Open Informant. The second way is if there is, Luke has explained about Care Service Di Directory Actor. Care Service Directory Actor is a CSD source of data. Any system that can publish its human resource information systems in CSD standard is regarded as a care service directory actor. If there is that system you know, you can link Open Informant, open informant directly with that system and then it can fetch those human resource information systems directly to Open Informant. What you can do, do is just to go to this menu, register and pull remote service directory, and then just say the name, the name of the document that will be holding those information I can say, let's say, test two, and then the URL for which you want those information to be fetched. So just provide the address of that particular system, like the localhost, blah, 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 and then username and password. Once you submit, then Open Informant can fetch information from that system. The other way, you might it might happen that you have you have human resource informations or uh, facility informations or service organizations in in your flash disk. They are already converted in CSD. What you can do is just you can load the, that file in one of the directory of the basics directory called uh, service directory. Once you put that file in there, you can just access it in here load and register sample service directory. And I'm going to use this method. Uh, so I have a file that has CSD, it's a CSD document that has health worker information 
and facility information and service information, which I'm going to use for demonstration on the Open Informan Administration Console. So I have already loaded that file in Open Informan file system, and it's called test data, this one. So once you have your file loaded in Open Informan file system, you can just access it on this interface, and then you can just initialize. Initialize means you are taking those information from that file and load it into the BASIX database. Once it is initialized, you can just come here to server management, and then you can see uh, you can see the data that was contained in your file have been already lo loaded into BASIX database. You can click and open and see what is the content inside. This is how it looks like. So I have my file loaded into Open Informan. Now, as you can see, the interface is user-friendly. It is an XML file, which you can't read properly. That is the reason now we have the administration console. So, this one is the so-called Open Informan or Open HIE Health Worker Registry, or you can call it Admi Open Informan Administration Console. What it's doing is just it doesn't store any information. It relies on the basic database. So all the information or all the CSD data that are in Open Informan are the ones that can be configured into the administration console so that you can access them in a friendly way. So suppose that I want to access this file from the administration console. What I will do is just go in here. And uh, what I'll do is just select remote directories. And then I'll go to info managers. And then I can add CSD info manager. Here is where now I'm going to define uh, where to load, where the administration console is going to load information. So what I'll do is just to, if open informan needs password and username, I can just specify username and password. And then here is where I specify the URL. This is the sample. So for example, I can use this one. And then uh, I can specify, here's where I specify the name of the directory that I want to fetch information from. I think you remember our directory, which I, I loaded from Open Informan is called test data. So I'm going to use this one. And uh, if, if you want to write, or if you want to make this administration console to be able to write information to open informant, then you can fill this field in here, meaning that you, you'll be able now to write information into open informant. And this, and this should be selected if and only if informations are managed by open informant. But if there is other softwares, like there is any other human resource information so software that is managing information, we don't advise that you enable this write mode within the administration console because it might bring some uh, inconsistency of information. So for me, I'm going to skip this one. And then uh, I will specify the name of my document. I can say test data one, let's say. And then I'll need to specify what information does it contain. Does it contain organization information? Does it contain service information? Does it contain health worker details? Does it contain facility directory? So it depends on the content of the file. So for my file, it, that it contains all the information. It contains health worker details, facility details, and organization details and service direct information. So once saved, what I'll do now, I'll go back to select remote directories, and then I'm now linking my administration console, I'm telling it that for health worker directory, please use test data one. For facility information, use also test data one. For service directory, test, test data one and organization test data one. Once I'm done with that, you can just update. And then I can start using or accessing those information 
using the administration console. For example, I can search for someone, let's say Donald. I know there is Donald. Search. Yeah, so there is one record that matches my search criteria, which is Mary McDonald. There are some number of search criteria that you can use to filter these records. So I can open Mary McDonald to see what information is contained. So the one thing to note is that uh, the administration console was developed uh, using the minimum, the WHO minimum data sets of the Health Workforce Registry but it can be customized depending on the needs of the country. So, so these are the minimum data set that are available. So these are the basic informations of Mary, like you have an entity ID, which is the global ID. You have uh, the source directory, like uh, who has pub published this record, then language that Mary can speak, gender, speciality, health worker status, CADA, and uh, date of birth. You can also decide uh, to view more records about this health worker. Yes, so there are other informations as you can see, like you have an address of where, where I think there is a bug in here, but it is supposed to show an address like this one. Where does this health worker belongs to? His physical address, some contact information like phone numbers and others, uh, credentials like certificates of this uh, uh, of this health worker, and then facility for which this health worker is working, and then I mean health worker's name and uh, organization, affiliation, organization for which this health worker belongs to. You can also update if, if the administration console is in read and write mode, you can update or add new information as you can see in here. You can add new or you can update. So currently it is on read only mode so there is nothing I can do. Yeah, so there is also some bunch of reports, like you can view reports. Currently there are three predefined reports, but adding reports on the administration console is easy. Uh, you can have a CSD facilities report, CSD provider report. We can have a look at this. If it is generated, then we'll be able to see some reports. So my server is slow. Yeah, so this is how uh, the default report looks like. And this report can be customized depending on the needs. And more reports can be added. So I think I'm done. OK, yeah, I think that sounds good. I was just about to break in to try to go through some of the questions. Um, so I'll just start through there. One of the, the, so the first question that came in was how many days to set up the registry? Um, that's a bit complicated. <laughs> the, the software itself doesn't take very long, uh, as you can see, depending, you know, depending on your server, you could just install from packages and you could have a, a server up very quickly. Um, getting the data in the right format um, and, and, and getting the data from all the various sources is what may take a little more time depending on on where your data is now. Um, so that one is kind of tough to estimate <laughs> uh, because it depends on what you've already got um, and how you want to pull it together. Um, there was a question about if we need if you need to install Iris and Open Info Man separately. Um, so the Open Info Man is a is a separate piece of software just for for managing CSD. Um, the, the, this interface is a separate piece of that, but again, you can install it from packages. 
if you're also running Iris as an HR information system, then yes, it would be uh, run and managed separately from your HR department. Um, there's a question to confirm that CSD combines a facility registry and health worker registry. Um, not quite sure what you mean there exactly. CSD does hold facility and health worker data and it can be used um, as that interlinked registry to query all of that data at once. Um, as for the virtual machines, we uh, I'm not sure how much time we have. We do have some work with Docker to, to, to run Open Info Man. Um, and maybe we can just follow up by email on that one about um, getting it run using Docker. Uh, we're working on getting Iris run. We don't quite have that set up yet, um, but we could possibly work together to try to get something uh, going for virtual machines or, the, or Docker. Um, I just uh, there was a question about the ITI transactions and how how to use them. Those are uh, available for anyone to use if you want to certify software that you uh, meet those. Um, that that would cost a little bit. We're we're doing that with Open Info Man and Iris. Um, and I did paste some links in the chat for where you can find the CSD and CSD profiles. Um, we did, well, there's a, uh, let's see, we already covered that one, I think. Um, question about why CSD has different actor names um, than MCSD. I think that just may be a, because of the way that, that IHE kind of works. With, I mean, they're, they're doing different things, so, you know, even though they seem kind of similar, um, there's not a complete exact overlap. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly how to <laughs> how to answer that one. It's just you know more about the way IHE works. Um, trying to go through everything. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alvin had made a comment about the. Um, it seems to make this work. The various professional directory owners need to trust the Open Info Man administrator. Um, that's not exactly true. They don't. You don't have to allow uh, editing of that source data directly. Um, so Open Info Man could just get. I mean, they do need to to trust it in one way in that they are sharing their data, um, but they don't have to allow changes to their source data. Um, the, the editing that Ali was showing is on the cached version, um, and that doesn't have to be, you don't have to install that. Um, you know, you don't need to allow editing. Um, the business reason, uh, Alvin had a question about what is the business reason to use BaseX. Um, I mean, the reason that the BaseX was used was to, be, because, you know, the data, CSD is XML-based, um, and since it is, it is an XML database engine, um, unfortunately, I wasn't involved at the, in that decision, so <laughs> I, I'd have to go back, and we, we can try to pull that together as to uh, where that came from. Um, And then uh, Yuda had a question regarding the health worker registry. How user uh, testimonial so far about this web-based software? Uh, we can go to the people that are using it and try to get some some information on on how they feel about it. And then, what is your suggestion if we would like to train our system administrator from the very beginning to understand this service? Um, I, mean, I think the, the system administrators would be the ones, well, I guess there's two different levels, I'm not, and I'm not quite sure which one you mean. Um, but, you know, they would be the ones that would be, I would assume, installing the software. Um, and we have, you know, the wiki to get information on that, as well as the community where they can ask questions uh, about what's going on kind of behind the scenes and how things need to run, and, you know, dealing with backups and things like that. If you mean more from the administration of the interface and the data, then the implementation guide um, should provide answers to that. 
Um, and then I think there was one last question from Derek. Uh, I would welcome hearing how the cross-referencing of workers and services to places could be leveraged to support GIS workflows. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by a GIS-based workflow. Um, I mean, having all that data in one place just makes it easy for people to query. So, um, I mean, it, you know, you could think of further down the line, you may have someone that is, uh, has traveled to a new city, maybe this is what you mean, <laughs> and they need, and they've gotten hurt somehow, um, you know, if they, if they have, you know, it depends on the infrastructure there, if they can get somewhere where they can do lookups, uh, you could potentially have an SMS-based system where someone can say, you know, I need just a regular doctor. Where's the closest doctor? Um, and you could have something set up that would that would respond to that query. Um, it's a bit more complicated. MCSD actually has an, a, a option for doing that, for, for getting, you know, the distance-based queries um, to say, okay, here's people within you know, five miles. Here's where all the clinics are within five miles, and there are people there. Um, so if that covers that, I think we're about out of time. I don't, uh, let's see, I'll, let me see if I can. Nope, Richard. Can you hear me? Ooh. Okay. Hi, thank you very much for this webinar. It's very, very useful. I find it very interesting. Just to give you some feedback, there's a lot of um, buzz right now in the ASEAN because there's going to be a demand for um, uh, directories from each country connecting to a directory of another country to make sure that you know a cardiologist in the Philippines is also recognized as a cardiologist, for example, in Malaysia. So I think we, we, we can have an offline discussion on what we should and can do. I think a, a, a simple project would be the first thing that we need to do. My question, and I, I have more questions uh, by email, but the question is, how many open informants should there be ideally in the country? Should it only be one, or can there be a federation of open informants men in a country? Either. Um, you can you can have a federation, um, and it, and it may depend as you kind of saw on the open HIE map, um, or not the map, but the ar the architecture map. Um, you know the health worker registry can be spe can specifically only be the health worker registry, and that can be an instance of open info man. Uh, you could then also have an interlinked registry, which would be which could be a separate instance of open info man that would pull. From that health worker registry, it could pull from the facility registry. It could pull from, a, you know, a private hospital system. Um, so, and, and but you could also have them, you know, you could have them spread out. You could have a health worker registry, or an interlinked registry in each, you know, county, if that's what makes the most sense. So you could look up things by county, and then those could be integrated into a central. Um, Central Open Info Man for the whole country. Thank you. Um, let's schedule another webinar, and uh, I'll, 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 I'll focus on uh, the business aspects, and let's work together on preparing for that. But I think this is something that we can really uh, grab on uh, in the ASEAN. Thanks, guys. Happy Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. I think that is, uh, this is Ali. I, I, I'm ending it for tonight. Thank you very much to Ali, uh, Emily, Luke, Richard. Uh, we look forward to another call soon, um, looking at the questions and also some things that we can do forward as a community. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Alvin. Thank you.